opportunity to discuss breeding birds. Because in my way of thinking, breeding birds is one of the most wonderful things anybody who has a pet bird can do. Now, if you have just one pet bird, it's a problem. So we need to first think about getting two. They need to be opposite sex, a boy and a girl. So today we're going to talk about the equipment you need, the types of things that will make you successful breeding pet birds. Because today, all of the birds that we're selling in retail pet stores are being bred locally in the United States. And the birds that I sell are all being bred locally right in the Maryland area which is really exciting because if you have a pair, you can end up making quite a bit of money, actually, from breeding your pet birds and offering them for sale. This is what we're going for to start with. It's eggs. And this little dish has a collection of eggs in it from something that's very, very tiny, like this little canary or finch egg. If it was a canary egg, it would be blue, but finch eggs are about the same size up to parakeet and parallet and cockatiel and actually some white dove eggs. This is what we're going for. So today we're going to figure out how to get them. First of all, you need to know what kind of birds you have. And if you have canaries, you're going to have this type of a nest. It's an open nest and you're going to offer your canaries nesting hair. I've covered up the picture in the middle of this box because it clearly shows a parakeet. And parakeets don't use nesting hair, but the canaries do. And as you see, they'll line their nest first with the hair or with some fabric or with feathers, and then they will lay their eggs in the nest. Usually every other day, you'll find a little egg. And if you're a canary breeder, in most cases, you're going to be taking out each egg as it's laid and replacing it with a plastic egg so that when the hen starts to sit on all four eggs, which is about what she's going to lay at the same time, all the babies will hatch the same time. Because when they hatch every other day, sometimes mother canaries are not very good at figuring out how to feed them. So we'll hang this little box in the cage and I like to um, cut the hair even smaller then it comes in the package. And you can do the same thing with burlap, little strips of burlap, or anything else that will make a nice soft bed without having to worry about it wrapping around the legs of the babies. The bird in the background was simply my clock. I need to be alert whenever the hour is up to a different type of bird. So, canaries, we would choose this kind of nest. If we had finches, we would choose this kind of nest in most cases, zebra finches being the most common. Although, if we're doing Lady Goulds, well, we're going to want to have a nest box. And if we're breeding any of our parrot family birds, we're going to want to be using a nest box somewhat like this. And these boxes are interesting because if you look inside, you'll see that we have a curved part in the center of the floor of the box. Sometimes this is a removable block, in this case it's not. And the hen will go into the hole that is attached to the cage. She'll make her nest depending on what kind of bird she is. If she's a parakeet, she would be nesting in the wild in a tree of rotten wood, and so she would just dig out some of the tree to hollow it out and lay the eggs there. Your pair of parakeets may start by chewing the edge of the hole, which is called working the nest, so that they get the idea that this is a good thing. Sometimes I'll put a little bit of uh, shavings in the bottom of the box, but most of the time your parakeets are fine with nothing in the bottom of the box. Cockatiels, the same thing. So we don't ever buy nesting hair for parakeets or cockatiels despite the picture on the box. The cage that we use is going to be something that we can hang this box on the outside. Now I'm not going to hang it down low like one of the doors for food or water. I'm going to hang it up high and either on the side or the back. This particular cage is nice because it has a breeding door. And as you see, that door 
swings open, and then you put two little cup hooks on your nest. You hang it on the outside of the cage. The hen can go in and out of the cage and in and out of the box. And when she lays eggs, which she hopefully will in a few days, you can look to see what's going on. You also should look to see what's going on because you want to see if you have babies hatched, you want to see if everybody's being taken care of and fed properly, and you want to see that everything is going well in the nest box. We've looked at the eggs already, but we need to know how to prepare our birds. First of all, no matter what bird it is that you choose to breed, you're going to be wanting to have a light cycle that is longer days than nights. And that's why right now, after Christmas, as day length increases, lots of birds are thinking about breeding. And so even your individual pet bird may decide all of a sudden she's going to lay an egg if it's a little hen. A lot of those hens have boys' names, I've discovered. And all of a sudden, people are panicky because here's an egg in the cage, and what should they do? The answer is, if you only have one bird, leave the egg until she completes a clutch, which will, with a parakeet, be maybe four or five eggs, with a cockatiel, three, four eggs. And wait until she has not laid eggs for seven days before you take those eggs away. Otherwise, the bird gets the message that a predator has stolen my egg, I have to lay more. And the shell of the egg is made mainly of calcium. So one of your first clues is going to be that your bird will start going through the cuddle bone or other calcium source that you have really, really fast. You'll be amazed. All of a sudden, the cuddle bone that's been sitting in there all year is gone. And it's because she's replacing the calcium in her bones that she's used to coat the outside of the egg. Once she is sitting on the eggs, she's incubating, and each species has a time that they sit on the eggs to hatch the babies. With most of our birds, it's under a month, frequently as short a period of time as about 14 days, maybe for zebra finches. The babies, when they are born, in the birds that we have in the pet trade, are almost all altricial babies, and altricial babies don't have any feathers or down of any real significance when they're hatched and their eyes are closed. If you're breeding baby cockatiels or parakeets at about 14 days, you will see that their eyes are wide open. They will have been, become open at about 10 days. By the time the babies in the nest have grown to be about three weeks old, what you are going to see is little birds that are just absolutely adorable even though they're still clearly not ready to go. In fact, this little bird would be much happier back in the nest, doesn't understand why he's out, and I'm not feeding you right now either, so this is very confusing, I know, but that's okay. He's getting a little bit used to my voice because I've had him just for two days. He came in when he was three weeks old, or at least one of this clutch was three weeks old, and he has been hand-fed now for a couple days. This particular bird is going to be a pearl and also pied. Pied birds have these lovely, lovely areas of white on them, and, and this little bird's wing is going to have some beautiful long white feathers on the end. Even though these fellas are way too young to be flying, I've already trimmed the wing on one side. The reason I did that is as they grow older, you're not going to be able to tell by looking which one is the oldest and which one is the youngest. But if you look at this little one, who isn't going to be pied, but it certainly is going to be a beautiful little pearl chick, you'll see that this one's tail is a little bit shorter than the other one. Its wing feathers are a little bit shorter than the other one. And you can still see the fuzzy down on the back of the baby. So we'll tuck them back in. As you can hear, they are not thrilled about being out of their nest bag. In fact, the nest bag is extremely comfortable for them and keeps them nice and safe. Now, in order to get to this point, you have to do a few things beyond 
just putting the box up. You have to be providing extra foods. And so every time I have birds that I want to be feeding uh, extra well, I put in spray millet. Once I have cockatiels especially breeding, I take a whole carrot and I slice it lengthwise, and then I wedge it between the bars for them. And the pair of cockatiels that I had that was breeding at the house literally went through the whole carrot every day, chewing it up just like a buzz saw. I'll pick that one up later because if I don't wedge it in, they can't really get a purchase on it to chew it properly. I will add egg food, a separate food cup of egg food. This particular product is for red factor canaries. And those canaries, if you feed them food that has red pigment in it, like this does, will absorb that pigment into their feathers and instead of being yellow, they'll turn out a lovely red bird. So this is designed specifically for red factor canaries, but any of the egg foods are fine to feed any of the babies. And I will also feed everything that's in my refrigerator, especially things like kale, hard-boiled egg is wonderful, bok choy, uh, anything that is particularly nutritious. So I skip lettuce. I frequently will buy what looks good at the salad bar in the grocery store if it looks particularly tasty. Some birds will develop a quite a nice taste for the most expensive thing in the salad bar, I've noticed. Uh, but whatever looks good to you, offer to your birds. Nesting material is something that uh, I will tell you a real quick story about. We had a pair of lovebirds at an, uh, a nursing home, and I went to look in the nest box because they were actually breeding. And I asked the gentleman who was taking care of them, what was in the bottom of the nest box? He was bringing them his toast in the morning, and they had taken the toast into the nest box, and they were actually raising their baby lovebirds on a slice of toast. If you have grasses outside, put them in the bottom of the cage. Some of your finches especially will weave the grasses into their nest. If you have uh, vines, some of the lovebirds just love a couple pieces of honeysuckle that they'll tuck into the rump of their feathers and they will fly it into the nest and use that in their nest. But the end result is going to be lovely baby birds that will be wonderful pets, both for you and for your friends and for any of the stores that are interested in buying baby birds to have for their customers. That's why I prefer all of my customers to be thinking about breeding baby birds so that Animal Exchange in Rockville has the best babies and the best pets you've ever seen. Thanks for watching and do think about breeding baby birds and if you're in Maryland call me and I will be more than happy to talk to you about breeding birds and buying babies from you.